Hi, Tony Poulos here at TM Forum's Digital Transformation World in Nice. Today I have with me Tarek Amin from Rakuten and Amal Fadka from Accenture. Gentlemen, welcome. Great to catch up. Tarek, could I start with you? Could you tell us a little bit more about the Rakuten cloud native 4 and 5G ready project? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, let me describe what is Rakuten first. Um, well, the big surprise, Rakuten is not a telecommunication company. We are a global internet innovation company that revolves around membership. We have massive ecosystem around OTT applications such as uh, fintech services, travel, credit card, one of the largest e-commerce vendors uh, in Japan. Uh, in fact, if you look at the total number of people living in Japan today, around 128 million, 105 million of them live in our transaction system. So it's a, it's a remarkable uh, connectivity opportunity. This is the first time to my knowledge that an internet web scale company get into the connectivity business. So in June of 2018, we had an opportunity. The opportunity is, do we build network same old, same old way? Or do we transform the industry and do something that has never been done before? So we took a bold step and said, look, I think we have the right skills. We have the right culture. We have the right DNA to build the world first into end cloud native network. Today, what happened in the telecom industry, I think as we talk about transformation and virtualization, I think most of the industry has been focused on the core. We look at it as a whole story. And the story starts from the complex. The most complex things in telecom is the radio access. And so we virtualized radio access. We made all the core element, nothing but software workloads, sitting on the same horizontal private cloud. And February 4th, this network came alive when we made our first call, and what an emotional day that was. Amal, if I could ask you, what is the importance of the operating model for unlocking the growth and revenue potential of the new technologies that 5G is bringing? Yes, so Tony, as Tarek said, the operating model and actually culturally how you make this new operating model work is the fundamental pillar before we unlock any revenues. Because a lot of the times when we work with our clients, they want to unlock new revenue streams, but the network and the processes and the systems that are sitting behind those networks are actually something that are inhibiting them from unlocking that revenue. So as Tarek said, building an end-to-end -end cloud native network, not just from a technology perspective, but from a culture and a mindset perspective is a fundamental prerequisite to unlocking the revenues. And then beyond that, of course, as Tarek said, a lot of industry verticals, whether it's FinTech, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's health, whether it's uh, vehicles and so on, in the whole business to business domain are gonna get unlocked once you do this right and you open up new technologies like 4G and 5G. And Tarek, what are the features of the cloud native operating model that you're using that need to be addressed to achieve all of your goals? So one of the most fundamental tenets of our architecture revolves around the premise of disaggregation of hardware and software. We started with an oversimplification of our entire infrastructure, going from hundreds of SKUs of server types to only six hardware SKUs. That yields massive efficiency around automation and productivity. Second, one horizontal private cloud serving two large data centers and 4,000 edge data centers. Our cloud is horizontal and not really vertical stacks of different clouds across our network. Many software applications and VNFs are the tenants of this private cloud and of course wrapping all of this with a full automation and orchestration platform to monitor, to deploy, to scale these VNFs. And I think those are one of the key tenants in our architecture. And if I could ask both of you, what are the keys to successful collaboration in a project such as this? Firstly, Tarek. Before we even talk about technology and capability, I think the most important thing is to see if you culturally connect on the same DNA as it relates to process, people, and organization. So I think firstly, you have to really be convicted about your belief uh, with your partners. And I think if you find individuals and leaders that believes in the same mission and strategy, that to me is the most fundamental, most important thing that we could do before even evaluating technologies uh, firstly, it's about the people. And so that for me has always been, um, uh, you know, how I evaluate and select partners and vendors we, we interact with. And Amal? 
Yeah, I mean, it's very close to what Tarek said. I mean, the readiness piece of this is extremely important. You know, a lot of the times when we start the collaboration, it gets into the transactional element of it, you know, in terms of how can we add value and so on, which is all very important, but that comes in a much later phase. The readiness phase around, do we have the right mindset? Do we have the right skills? Do we have the right roles? Do we have the right people? is what's actually going to make any disruptive program happen, especially the program that Tariq's driving, which is very large and unique and innovative in the, in the industry. And it requires that mindset to say, let us look at the readiness just as importantly as the technology and the execution and the operation. So to me, that's the key to getting this uh, ecosystem right. Well, gentlemen, it sounds like a great collaboration in progress. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.